In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let me say what an honor it is to be with you as you celebrate a novena in honor of the Immaculate Conception, the patronal feast of our country and of this beautiful parish. Mater boni concili ora pro nobis. Your Latin is better than mine, but that's the title of our Blessed Mother that we honor tonight. The Mother of Good Counsel, pray for us. It's a Marian title that reminds us of what a gift Mary is in the in scrutable ways of God who provides for his people. In the fullness of time, he sent his son, and he gave Mary a prevenient grace so she would be preserved from original sin. and She would become the ark of the new covenant, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Verbum caro factum est et avitavit in nobis. Years ago, I read a book, The Song of Bernadette, which has everything to do with the apparition in Lourdes in 1858. A beautiful story, a powerful one, and when I finished, I said, the author must be a very devout Catholic, written so touchingly about the Blessed Virgin Mary. The author's name is Franz Werfel. It turns out that he's a Jewish man. I thought, how does a Jewish man write so beautifully about the mother of Jesus? The story is, is that he was one of the early critics of the Nazis, and for that he had to flee for his life. He left Vienna. And he was on his way to Portugal to catch a ship to the United States for freedom, sanctuary, a chance to begin again. But he found himself stuck in a little village of Lourdes in the Pyrenees in France. And that winter, with a lot of time on his hands, he learned about Bernadette, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and he was so moved that he made a promise. He said, God, if you'll grant me safe passage, if you'll protect and preserve my family, I promise that I will sing the song of Bernadette. And he did just that, and the world is a better place for it. Analogously, we come here tonight to sing, to praise God who would think so highly of the human race, to elevate the Blessed Virgin, to be the mother of his only begotten son, the pride of the human race, the woman steeped in humility and purity, docile to God's will in unfathomable ways, and we honor her. We praise God for the gift of her, and it's her intercession that gives us hope. The Mother of Good Counsel, maybe you know the history of this particular title that was added to the litany by Pope Leo XIII. Since 1467, the image is in Italy, a little town called Genizzano. I'm not sure when I read about our the Mother of Good Counsel the first time, but having studied in Italy, I said the next time I get there, I'm going to find her. And so I went to the town of Genizzano, except that there are two towns with essentially the same name, and I went to the wrong town. I think that's symbolic of the spiritual life. We don't always get it right the first time. We have to be humble or maybe accept some humiliations. Be determined. St. Teresa of Avila said a very determined determination is necessary to follow the mysterious plan of God. Eventually, I did find it in 2008, a beautiful little village. And the story is that the Turks were marching on Albania that had already conquered Constantinople, the last invincible fortress in the world in 1453, and now they were sweeping up through the country of Albania. And so there were two devout Catholics that were given a premonition that their beloved image, the Mother of Good Counsel, would be leaving. And so miraculously, she did. She came unhitched off the wall and flew out across the Adriatic and ended up in that little church where she remains to this day. Not a very big image, but one that's been revered by countless souls, honored by popes, Innocent IX, Pius IX, John XXIII, the night before the beginning of the Second Vatican Council, St. John Paul II, honored by saints like Alphonsus Ligurian, St. Don Bosco. And now, tonight, honored by you. Our Lady, our Mother of Good Counsel, you know that counsel is a gift of the Holy Spirit. It's a supernatural version of the cardinal virtue of prudence, which means making good decisions based on truth. You'll know the truth, it will set you free. So counsel is a, allows us to align our will with God's will. Just 
as an illustration, I used to teach high school students and we were putting on a retreat. I had a retreat team that came in and I told them the next morning there's early mass. And then the day begins with school and they'd have a day with the students, a day of recollection. I said the mass isn't obligatory, but you're welcome to come. They didn't. They were tired, they said, and it had been a pretty tough stretch. And That day I was watching them give the retreat. and They did a good enough job on a natural level, but at one point they changed what they were doing. They said they felt drawn in a different direction, and it didn't go so well. You see, counsel, it comes from the Holy Spirit. And we have to be docile. We have to receive. Be it done unto me according to thy will. And if we absent ourselves, grace is not a, a magic trick. It's given by God, but it's up to us to cooperate, to open our hearts and souls to receive. Another woman a few months later came to give a talk, same sort of scenario. I told her about early Mass, and she showed up. She said that she went to daily Mass as often as she could. She was a busy mama. And I watched her give her talk. And it was one that was anointed. You could tell that her words were God's words because she made herself a vessel, an instrument to be available for whatever God wanted to say and do. Counsel, our mother of good counsel, what sort of advice, counsel, would she give to you and to me tonight? Her last recorded words in the scriptures are these. Do whatever he tells you. Good advice. And that's the nature of holiness, is that it's, he must increase, we must decrease. Oh, there's a stubborn streak in us. It's a part of original sin. That part of us must die many times as the grain of wheat falling to the earth, but then and only then can it bear fruit that will remain. You know the story of the wedding at Cana? Earlier, before she said those words, she announced to Jesus they have no wine. And you remember his response, which always strikes me as a little bit brusque. He says, woman, what is that to me? My hour has not yet come. Exegesis, you know, is the way the church explains passages and applies them, helps them to be relevant to our time and place. It is the word of God, which, of course, is inerrant. And it's as deep as God himself. One of my favorite exegetical explanations is this, that Jesus was saying to his mama, Mom, I can work this miracle, but if I do, it sets me on a path, on a trajectory that leads to a place that you too, a sword of sorrow, will pierce. Are you ready? Do you accept? And just as she had in the fullness of time, again she gave her fiat. Do whatever he tells you. Which is Mary's way of saying, trust him. Don't be afraid to suffer. Suffering is the mark of love, writes St. John of the Cross. And those who suffer learn it through vulnerability, humility, and trust. Things that are always a challenge for the human heart. This lady, Jennifer Fulweiler, she was uh, raised without any faith had no connection to God, no real experience of organized religion. She was in college and, you know, like attracts like, so most of her friends were atheists. It's a Friday night, they were going to go out, and she um, got a call, and it was a, some salesman, and she put him on speakerphone to have some fun because her friends were in the room and we could mock this guy, and that's always a source of, well, a low level of humor. And he said right away that he was selling whatever, vacuum cleaners. And she said, well, that's against my religion. He said, well, what religion is that? And Jennifer said, I'm a Christian. And right away, the guy started to gush. He said, oh, praise God, me too. That's wonderful, sister. And they are all starting to snicker and have a good time, unbeknownst to this guy. But he goes on in complete sincerity. He says, you know, Jesus saved my life. Some years ago, I was struggling. I turned to alcohol. I got in the bottle and I couldn't get out. One day, my wife took the kids and left. And then, for the first time in my life, I fell down on my knees 
And I said, please, God, help me. And he did. By this point, the man is crying. He's giving his witness to Christ, who is the good shepherd, who came to help sinners, not the healthy people, but the sick that need a divine physician, people like you and me. By the time he hung up, it was very quiet. And he said that it's nice to share my faith. Sometimes it's so lonely. I sure hope you know the peace of Christ. Jennifer said when she hung up the phone, she knew that she didn't. She had never experienced the peace of Christ. But she decided that night that she would find out where it was to be found. You know, Jennifer, she was baptized and is a Catholic now, raising a big, beautiful family, giving her witness. Mary is the mother of good counsel. Her counsel is to do whatever he tells you. She'll help us with that. She'll pray for us. She's an advocate and a mother, an intercessor, pure and through. Let's end with a prayer that Pope Pius XII, he loved Mary, the mother of good counsel. He wrote this prayer in a time that was, well, a tumultuous time. But that's true of pretty much every time in this world. O Holy Virgin, to whose feet we are led by our anxious uncertainty in our search for and attainment of what is true and good, invoking you by the sweet title of Mother of Good Counsel, we beseech you to come to our assistance when along the road of this life the darkness of error and of evil conspires toward our ruin by leading our minds and our hearts astray. O seed of wisdom and star of the sea, Enlighten the doubtful and the erring, that they be not seduced by the false appearances of good. Render them steadfast in the face of the hostile and corrupting influences of passion and of sin. O Mother of Good Counsel, obtain for us from your divine Son a great love of virtue, and in the hour of uncertainty and trial, the strength to embrace the way that leads to our salvation. If your hand sustains us, we shall walk unmolested along the path indicated to us by the life and words of Jesus, our Redeemer. And having followed freely and securely, even in the midst of this world's strife, the Son of Truth and Justice under your maternal star, we shall come to the enjoyment of full and eternal peace with you in the haven of salvation. Amen. Mater boni concilii, ora pro nobis. Amen.